Uh, Will, this, this video is, is hard to look at, but uh, what can you tell us about it? I know there's, there's not a whole lot of information, uh, but it gets to the, uh, the desperation uh, that we're seeing out there. Well, this location in southern Gaza, the Rafah crossing, is essentially one of the only lifelines for the 2.2 million people in Gaza because it's where you can bring in supplies from Egypt. There's, a, there's always a long line of trucks waiting to cross, but they don't always get through. Uh, today, uh, we know that there were dozens of trucks that did get through, but their uh, efforts to distribute aid in Gaza were hampered by these large, desperate crowds. You're talking about hundreds of people uh, at least that's what we can ascertain from this footage, uh, jumping on the trucks, trying to break in and grab whatever items they could. Uh, it seemed as if it was really a mad dash. And at some point, gunfire erupts. So adding to the chaos and the confusion is the danger of bullets whizzing through the air. We don't know who was firing the shots. We don't know how it started or necessarily why. But in a chaotic situation like that, when people are so hungry and so desperate, and so determined to try to get what they can, in many cases, just to support themselves and their families. Uh, but there could also be potentially looting. We saw that there were tires that were set on fire, and then you had the gunshots ring out as well. Listen to what it sounded like at the height of all of this. It is Christmas Eve, Jim. Mm. These people have lived through week after week of airstrikes. There's been ground combat that's now expanding. Uh, the IDF, the Israeli military, moving into central and southern Gaza, their operations. There have been airstrikes throughout all of these areas. And now on top of that, a brawl around the relief trucks and gunfire. People are living an absolute hellish nightmare right now in Gaza. And this video is all you really need to look at to just get a, a little bit of a glimpse of what it's like for them. And this is why the call for aid, the call for help, the call to, to do whatever the world can to improve the situation for more than 2 million people living through this is even more urgent on this Christmas Eve than it's ever been. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that, that video right there just goes to the horror uh, of what life is like right now um, in that part of the world. And... And, and we just don't know. Uh, the gunfire is emanating in that video. Is that, is that something we can ascertain from looking at it? Yes. Or we just don't know. Okay. It is. It's in the video, but we don't know where the shots are being fired from. You don't see, there's no reports of anybody injured uh, that we know of. But again, uh, information can be slow going. A lot of times people have to climb up on a roof just to get an internet signal to feed back video like this. Um, our journalists on the ground in Gaza work so hard to record moments and sometimes it can take hours and hours and hours just to get the information back to us, to get a phone signal, to get the footage back. And so we hope to learn more about what exactly happened today in southern Gaza at the Rafah crossing. But you can see clearly in the pictures, it was a situation of people who are driven to the edge of desperation. Yeah. They are so desperate and, and so determined to try to get what they can grabbing whatever they can, running, running for it, and then having to essentially, you know, hear gunfire, wonder if they're going to have to dodge bullets after airstrikes and everything else that they've gone through. And by the way, most of these people on the, on the verge of starvation, extremely hungry because there's so little food and, and water, even, even drinking water available in Gaza right now. Uh, Barack, I, I do want to ask you about this uh, drone attack in just a few moments, but I wanted to go back to that video that Will Ripley was talking about near the Rafa border crossing. Uh, where we saw gunfire breaking out, people sort of almost running in a panic uh, with uh, relief supplies that had come in. Um, I guess, what's your sense when you talk to your sources about the level of desperation inside Gaza and whether things could, I mean, this just gives you a sense that things could really spiral out of control in a significant way that it just might become difficult for anybody to get a handle or, or, or a lid on the situation. What's your sense of it? First, I agree with you, Jim, that the situation is very, very serious and it's getting worse uh, by the day. And I think what is uh, uh, most challenging 
is that in a few weeks, uh, the Israeli military is going to phase out this operation and move from the high-intensity phase to the low-intensity phase, which means that the, most of the IDF soldiers will go out of the uh, Palestinian cities. And then you'll have a vacuum all over the Gaza Strip. And then either Hamas will come back again, or we will see the same pictures we saw in Rafah today, we'll see it all over the Gaza Strip. And the number one challenge now is to find a way for somebody to be in charge of law and order in a few weeks in Gaza so that all this humanitarian aid that's coming in won't be looted, will reach the people who need it. And unfortunately, at that moment, there's nobody that can do it. Right, because Barack, one, one of the conversations that really hasn't been uh, fully uh, dealt with is who is going to be the governing authority in uh, Gaza, uh, you know, in, in the near future. Um, it, I can't imagine Israel is going to want Hamas to be that governing authority. And it, when you see the chaos break out that we saw today, I mean, that is going to be a major challenge. Of course. And uh, if, there, if it's not Hamas, and if uh, there's no other uh, volunteer that can take uh, the Gaza Strip under its responsibility, the Egyptians are not going to do it, the Saudis are not going to do it, the Emiratis are not going to do it, then Israel can find itself, again, not next year and not uh, uh, six months from now, but a few weeks from now, in a situation where it will have to take responsible, responsibility for two million Palestinians in Gaza. And this is the last thing Israel wants. But if there's not going to be any alternative governing body, and for now there is not, you know, the responsibility will lay it at, you know, Israel's table. Yeah, and, and Barack, what do you make of the Pentagon singling out Iran uh, for this latest drone attack on this commercial uh, ship? It does sound as though... Uh, that, that tensions are, are really building, and it almost feels like a foreshadowing of something to come uh, to send a message to the Houthi rebels, to send a message to the Iranians, potentially. What, what can you tell us? I think what's important and interesting in this recent attack that uh, generated from Iran, this drone attack against this ship near the coast of India, is that it's a kind of attack that we haven't seen for many, many months. Uh, something like a year ago, we saw almost every week uh, an Iranian attack on some sort of a vessel that had either a strong connection or a weak connection to Israel. And this was part of this shadow war between Israel and Iran because the Israelis also attacked Iranian vessels. And this was this tit for tat. But we haven't seen this for a long, long time. And the fact that the Iranians decided to resume those attacks, those direct attacks from Iran against uh, Israeli vessels or vessels that are affiliated with Israeli companies, I think it's a very worrisome sign because it's uh, no doubt an escalation after what we've seen in the last few weeks. And when we were talking with Kevin Liptak earlier about this on this program, I mean, there is a sense in the Biden administration uh, that the Iranians may be setting something of a, a bit of a trap and that they, they want to almost bait the Israelis in the U.S. to, I guess, muster some kind of response that would widen the conflict, make things messier in the region. And I suppose that there's, there's that side of it, too, that, that has to be dealt with. Yeah. So senior Israeli officials that I talk to are, uh, you know, very aware that that's the case. And this is why you did not see Israel retaliating against the Houthis in Yemen, because the Israelis say this is exactly what the Iranians and the Houthis want. They want to distract us from Gaza. They want to distract us from trying to deter Hezbollah in the north, and we're not going to do it, and therefore Israel gives a chance for this international maritime coalition in the Red Sea. But on the other hand, the Israelis do say that they think that the U.S. should do something about it and about the Houthis, and you see that every day the Houthis are escalating their attacks on U.S. vessels in the Red Sea, U.S. Navy vessels, just, you know, the other day an attack on a U.S. Uh, ship. And... When I speak to uh, U.S. officials in Washington, they say and they, you know, they recognize that this is an option that's on the table. The U.S. taking military action against the Houthis. It's being considered uh, in the Pentagon. It's being considered in the White House. Secretary of Defense Austin, when he was just here in Tel Aviv a week ago, he told the Israelis, we are not taking a military action off the table when it comes to the Houthis. 
All right, uh, Barack Ravid, uh, perhaps something to be watching for uh, over these holidays. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate the time today. Thank you, Jim, and I hope you all have a calm holiday season. You as well.